Hello everyone. Welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. So we have started a series of videos on each of the phases of DMAC methodology. In my last video, we discussed about the define phase of DMAC. And in this video, we are going to talk about the measure phase in DMAC. Before we start this video, let us quickly understand what are the different phases of DMAC methodology. D stands for define, M stands for measure, A stands for analyze, I stands for improve, and C stands for control. The purpose of measure phase is to understand the extent of the problem with the help of data. So this is very important. We have always heard in the meetings that we should talk with data. So this phase is very important. We have identified what is the problem in the defined phase. And now we are going to collect data around that problem. The first thing that we do in the major phase is to identify the contributing factors to project Y. So basis the survey conducted by the hospital authorities, the average wait time by the patients after entering the hospital to finally meet a doctor is 42 minutes. That was the big problem that we were trying to solve in my previous video. So we have created the business case, project charter. We have identified the right goal statement. We have identified the team members. We have defined the process at a high level with the help of CIPOC or COPIS. And then we move into the major phase. The first thing that we do is to identify the potential access for the project Y. So my project Y is high wait time of the patients and I need to find out different causes to this particular problem. So if we look at this particular fishbone diagram, people, process, machine, mother nature, measurement and doctors are the broad heads under which all these causes are categorized. So if we look at the first cause which is under people, which says that registration clerk is slow. That means the clerk which is doing the entry in the system or booking the appointment for the doctors or taking the money from the patients, that clerk is not very efficient. That is one of the causes because of which there is high wait time. The clerk is playing favorites could be another cause like there are some clerks which are giving preferences to their known and the people standing in the queue, they are not bothering. Under process head, lengthy registration forms could be one of the causes. Too long registration queues are another cause. So number of counters are less which are actually contributing to the high wait time for the patients. Likewise, there are other causes like under machine, they have system issues, network is down, printer is not working. Under mother nature, they have rush on Wednesdays and they have too much rush during weekends. So these are some of the natural causes which can't be avoided. So they have to think about some solutions to these particular problems. But in the major phase, the main criteria is to identify all the causes. They may or may not be impacting the overall patient wait time, but they are. They may definitely be a cause. Under doctors, you will say they are not available. Their rounds take long time and doctors which are less in number, so that is why the patients are waiting. Under measurement, day of the week, week of the month and OPD availability in the mornings only could be some of the causes of high wait time. There are certain thumb rules that we need to follow during a brainstorming session. Whenever you are in a brainstorming session, you should have 5 to 8 people in the brainstorming session. No idea should be discouraged. So you should not laugh at any idea. You should definitely record idea. No idea is stupid. So you should give equal importance to all the ideas. Do not criticize the idea or do not shun the idea giver. Always have an uh, outside in view. Maybe a person who is not part of the process should be included in the brainstorming session. So these are some of the thumb rules. If you will follow these thumb rules, you will have a good brainstorming session and you will be able to identify all the potential access. Moving on in the major phase, the next thing that we have to do is to create a data collection plan. How to create a data collection plan? You should first write down the measure name like wait time. What is the measure type? Which is a project Y? It is patient wait time that we are talking about. Then there is a column that you should definitely fill, which is the sample size. How should you calculate a sample size is what I'm going to talk next. But there should be definitely a sample size mentioned in your data collection plan. Then you should have an operational definition of that particular data type. 
For example, wait time. Time taken by patient from entry to finally meet the doctor is the operational definition of wait time. Whosoever will be collecting data should collect data keeping this operational definition in mind. Likewise, all axes should be defined. Whether they are continuous or discrete, that also should be defined. And based on that, the data collection plan should be created. Before moving on, let me just show you how to calculate the sample size. So I'm using uh, a sample calculator which is on Google. The sample calculator has two fields. One is called confidence level and the other one is called confidence interval. So what is confidence level? All the Six Sigma projects, majority of them are done at 95% confidence. Some of the industries like aviation industry or pharmaceutical industry, they use a confidence level of 99%. Because output from these industries can impact the life or the death of the customers or the patients. The second thing is confidence interval. It is the interval in which the expected output will vary. I'll take one example and then we will understand that better. For example, if I say 5 is the confidence interval in this case and population size is 1 lakh patient that they come every month, then what should my sample size be? It says 370. Now, if I check the data for these 370 cases and my average patient wait time is 45 minutes, confidence interval of 5 means in this case that my wait time will vary between 40 to 50 minutes. Every time I will pick up a sample, it may vary between this range. Now, if I have to increase the confidence level, I will have to pick up a bigger sample size. So if I am if I want to be more confident about the kind of result that I am getting from this sample, I need to be picking up more sample size. And if I have to reduce the confidence interval, I want to shrink my assumptions between plus minus two only, then also my sample size will go up. So you can see it is now two nine three eight. So friends, this is how we can determine the sample size for a particular project. The next thing that we need to learn is how to pick up this sample from the entire population. So there is a sampling technique which is stratified random sampling. So we need to pick up our data from the data set by using this technique. What is this stratified random sampling? We need to divide the data into different subgroups and then pick up equal amount of samples from each of these subgroups. That becomes your stratified random sampling. So suppose for the ease of understanding, let us say we have to pick up 3000 samples from 1 lakh total population. How will we pick up? We will identify each of these patients into different subgroups as per their age. So we say 0 to 15 is first subgroup. So 15 to 30 years is the second subgroup. 30 to 45 years is the third. 45 to 60 is fourth and 60 and above is the fifth subgroup. Then I pick up 600 samples from each of these subgroups randomly and this becomes my stratified random sample. Whenever we collect data in any project in terms of samples we need to make sure that the sample should represent the population. For example if I say the population of India I can't determine the entire population of India by picking up samples from Delhi only. So population of India should be divided into different subgroups. All the states could represent as one of the subgroups and then the further subgrouping can be done in terms of religion. So if I create these many subgroups and I pick up sample from each of these subgroups, it will represent the population of India. This is also known as stratified random sampling. If you do sampling in this way, you will have a sample size which will represent the characteristics of the population and then you can do the further analysis on that particular sample. After doing the data collection plan and identifying the correct sample size, then we have to pick up the samples. How should we pick up the samples and how should we create the data in the Excel sheet? You should first say that the wait time, say for example, four minutes, 30 seconds is the wait time. Whether the doctor is available or not, Availability of doctor was yes or no in that particular case, yes. Network issue, there was no network issue. 
वॉज इट अ वीकेंड नो इट वॉज नॉट अ वीकेंड रजिस्ट्रेशन काउंटर टाइम वॉज थ्री मिनट्स एंड थर्टीन सेकेंड द एंटायर डेटा शीट शुड बी लाइक दिस द नेक्स्ट पेशेंट एंट्री शुड कम नेक्स्ट एंड देन नेक्स्ट एंड देन नेक्स्ट एंड दैट इज हाउ यू विल कलेक्ट डेटा ऑन द एक्स एंड द वाई दिस काइंड ऑफ अ डेटा विल बी ईजी टू इवेल्युएट वेन वी गो इन टू द एनालाइज फेज so friends i hope you would have understood how to identify the potential access to the problem and then how to create the data collection plan and i hope you have learned how to identify the right sample size for your project and you have also understood how to pick up your sample size with stratified random sampling so friends i hope you really like this video and if you really like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends I will see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye